check it out. Corsair Raptor M45. Raptor is like Corsair's budget line because it's a little bit lower priced than the, uh, the Vengeance and they typically cut a few corners to make a mouse. However, this mouse is sort of a paradox because they did cut some corners. Um, it's the same design as you would see on like a Vengeance mouse. Very same body style, uh, you know, sleek rubberized top here. Um, fully programmable buttons and all that jazz. The sides, however, are not uh, aluminum. The sides of the, I guess the, the, the chassis or the body underneath the chassis. It's, a, it's aluminum on the Vengeance. This one's plastic. A lot of you out there do prefer uh, optical. And myself, I, I prefer optical sensors. This is the Pixart PMW3310. It's a 5000 CPI slash DPI. Do I always have to say that? Can I just say CPI? Can everyone out there at all companies just say CPI? Counts per inch. I don't care about dots, I want counts. Uh, the response rate is up to 1,000 hertz. Let's take a full tour of the mouse. You'll notice there are two buttons by your thumb, and those are programmable. Then we have our left and right click. This also features Omron switches rated at 8 million clicks. We have our scroll wheel in the middle, and that can be depressed as another click. Just behind the uh, scroll wheel, we've got two buttons that allow you to change your CPI, and then there's a little LED light in between them to let you know exactly which uh, speed your mouse is going at. Yeah. On the front, uh, this is kind of interesting. The, the braided cable comes out of the left of the mouse. It doesn't come out of the center of the mouse. It does have a braided cable. I uh, like braided cables for the quality. Uh, I don't like them when they start to create a little bit of drag, so as long as you have it managed, you should be good to go. Let's look at the um, bottom of the mouse. There you can see we've got a total of five polytetafluoroethylene pads on the bottom here. Also, you'll notice there's a little face on the bottom here. Those are uh, weights that you can take off. You just unscrew them. I used a quarter to just unscrew these. And each one is 4.5 grams. So if you want a heavier mouse, you can just install them all. If you want a lighter mouse, you can take them out. You know, whatever you want in your happy mouse world, you can do it. The total weight, including the cable and everything else is 160 grams. And then you can adjust it with those weights. The dimensions of this unit are 118 millimeters by 77 millimeters by 39 millimeters. And uh, we do have some onboard storage here. So if you want to load up a few profiles, keep them right here. You know, you can program all the buttons and program macros, and I'm not going to get into the software in this video. Uh, but you know, if you've used any Corsair software out there, you probably know how this works already. And uh, it's nice to know that there is, you know, internal storage. So you'll be able to uh, keep this with you. Now, I think that's pretty much everything I really wanted to cover. Oh yeah, the, the cable length on this is, um, was it like 6.5, about six and a half feet. I didn't see it on their website, but we got out the tape measure and it's about six and a half feet long. Now you may see a snazzy Corsair mouse pad here. That is the Corsair MM. 400 and uh, it's got a specially tuned micro texture surface. If you're using a, a gaming grade sensor, it's specifically optimized for gaming grade sensors. I actually really like the size of this. It's not huge. It's a nice smaller sized mouse pad or actually more of like a normal, I guess, size mouse pad, especially compared to some of the mammoth gaming mouse pads out there on the market. The size is 352 millimeters by 272 millimeters by two millimeters. The bottom of this is has a very, very grippy rubber surface. I cannot move this thing around. It's gonna stay put when you put it on your desk. So I've been using that one uh, to test out this Corsair mouse. So, I mean, the, the real thing that I think is interesting here is that they've chosen to use such a high quality uh, sensor in this. And some may argue that the sensor in this is better than the sensor in the Vengeance. And if you're you know, a competition gamer, a lot of times you always go for optical sensors. Uh, also, Pixart, the, uh, the manufacturer of the sensor, is pretty much the same as Avago. Avago stopped making sensors and now Pixart is making all of the Avago sensors and the quality is pretty much exactly the same. So if you're wondering who the hell is Pixart? I've, I've always heard of Avago sensors, but I don't know who this is. Well, it's the same thing, same stuff. So if you're looking for something that is uh, optical, decent price, and if you like the, uh, the shape and the size of the Vengeance, want to save a little bit of money and get a really good optical sensor, then it's a good mouse based upon that. If you guys have any questions, put them on the forum. And if you guys want to know the price, you guys can go over to the forum. There's a link right below this video that'll take you over to the forum where you guys can get all the happy information you want. So that is the M45. Sometimes I like to clap my face against other people's faces, but they don't like it. If you like braided cables, honey, Go to town here. Watch the floor, Ethelene.